Hello folks, my name is Matt Peterson and I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works and I've been putting out a series this year for 2022 on YouTube all about the Power Platform and I've titled this, We've Got This, because my goal is to give you a lot of tips and tricks and basic foundational understanding about a lot of the Power Platform products. So my first two episodes were all about Power Apps, feel free to take a look in the comments below for the links to those videos. But this one, I want to head on over into Power BI and give you some top five top maybe six tips about what you should know about when working in the Power Query Editor. So without any further ado, let's head over into my Power Query Editor with some data and take a look at what we've got. So what I have here is a common thing that people like to do, which is we want to be able to merge data together because they're in different tables. We want to consolidate them into one table only. Now there can be a, a little thing that happens by accident that you don't realize all the time that I want to help you to avoid in the future. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I have this employee information table. I've got name, address, city, state, uh, and I also have their birthday. And then I also have another table called my employee salaries table, where I've got their name, their salary, and what their occupation is. Well, my goal is I want to take this salary and this occupation, and I just want to put it all into my employee information table. I want to consolidate it. So how do we get that accomplished? We simply do a merge. So what I'm going to do is show you how we get the merge done. This is going to be located in your home ribbon. We'll select the table that we want to start the merge over. And then I just head on over to merge queries. Now once here, I decide what two tables do I want to use. Employee information and I want my employee salaries. Then I have to figure out what is the matching of the merge. We have to have an identification column, which in this case is going to be my name column. So I'm going to hit name, name, and then for my join kind, I'm going to do enter because I only want matching records. So if someone's in the salaries table that's not in the information table, I don't want that record returned. So I'm simply going to hit OK. And as we do it, hooray, it worked. Eh, kind of. Take a look. It only brought back two rows. But I know that in my salaries table, I have Jack, Dave, and Trevor here. And in my employee information table before the merge, I also had Jack, Dave, and Trevor. Why didn't it work? It all comes down to a data entry error. And I have troubleshooted this a lot of times when I do VMs with my customers here at Pragmatic Works. And it's a best practice that we should always follow so that we don't have, even if there was a data entry error, we're still going to get the valid results. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to come up, going to get rid of this merge queries. And I'm going to go back to my employee salaries table. And here was the issue. Someone, when they wrote in Dave Matthews, they put a space in front of the D. So when it was looking for the match, it was looking for space Dave Matthews, not just Dave Matthews. So how do we fix this? Using one of our best tips and tricks within the Power Query Editor for merges, we're going to do a transformation on this column. So I'm going to right click on it, do a transform, and this is called a trim. When I execute the trim function, we will see that the white space in front of Dave Matthews has now been deleted. Now if I go back and execute my merge, so I'm back on employee information, go back to merge, employee information, employee salaries, do it on the name column, only return the ones that match. And now I hit OK, Woo! all three are there now. So tip number one, Always do a trim on any columns you're going to be using for the matches on your merges. So if there was a data entry error, hopefully it's not going to come back to bite you in the end. Now, if you're new to merging queries, you might be saying, what's going on over here? Where are those columns that you wanted? Well, what I need to do is just expand this out. So a whole table is returned. I need to choose what columns from that table do I want to be returned. Don't need name because I already have the name in this table. I just need salary and occupation. So I'm going to hit OK here. And bingo, salary, occupation are all here. Now, tip number two about a merge statement. After you do the merge, we do not need the employee salaries table anymore. When I hit close and apply, I'm ready to build the report. That employee salaries table is unnecessary and it would be confusing for my report builders. So the next tip we're going to do is a right click on this table and we're going to uncheck enable load. You might be saying, whoa, unchecking enable load. Don't I need the data mat? You do, but you only need to access the data in the query editor, let the transformations do their thing, and then load the final data that you need, which in this case is employee information, which I would probably at this point do a renaming of this table and just call this something like the employee uh, data. 
so all my employee data is in there all right so merging tips hopefully that comes in handy for you down the road the next thing that i want to talk to you about is what happens when you have these super wide tables with lots of columns and you're trying to do transformations on them well let me show you the inefficient way of doing it i'm going to head over to my tenure achievement log and this is a dataverse table and if you've worked with dataverse before it has a lot of extra columns that are pre-plumbed into them that oftentimes we really don't need for reporting purposes but they're needed in the background when working with power apps uh, relationships etc so Ah, I got so many. Look, I got 54 columns just on this one table. Now, to find those columns that I might want to transform, I can scroll, but as you see, it is hard to keep track. Look at all the column names. I don't want to do it that way. So, how can we get to a column quicker? Well, what we do is in our home ribbon, we're going to head over to the Choose Columns icon and we're going to hit Go to Column. By clicking Go to Column, this gives me a list of all of my columns. And now I can easily find the one that I want to reference. I can also search my columns as well. So if I know that there's a column like with name in it, if I start typing in name, any column that has the word name in it is now showing up. So I can come on over here to my teacher name column. I select it. I hit OK. And boom, I'm there immediately. And I didn't have to scroll left and right, left and right in order to find it. So that's a great thing to know about that go to column feature. Tip number three coming at you. What happens when we want to get rid of columns? I don't need all these columns for reporting purposes, so let's remove them. Here's the way that I would not do it. The way that I would not do it is the following. I select teacher name. I come up. I hit remove columns. And then maybe I say I want to get rid of the description column. I hit remove columns. Everything looks pretty easy and everything's good to go. But what if you need to go back and make a modification? Let's say you got rid of a column you didn't mean to. Well, how do you fix that? Well, unfortunately, we have two options. One, you remove that whole step so both columns get added back in. Or two, if you have some knowledge of the advanced editor and you can write M query, I could go and click on the advanced editor, find that column name, and then delete it from the code itself. Too much work, don't want to do it. Let me show you the better idea here. So I'm going to get rid of this original remove column step. Here is how I remove columns. In this home ribbon, I come over again to my choose columns icon, but this time I don't do go to column, I go to choose columns. This is so much easier as well because now I can search for any column I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to get rid of some random ones right here. Then when I hit OK, everything is great, but here's what makes it the best. When we come over to the applied steps, Notice next to this, it doesn't say remove columns, it says removed other columns. And we have this gear icon. When I click on this gear icon, which I didn't have the first time, notice what it brings up. It brings up the navigation of all the columns that I chose and which ones I chose to get rid of and which ones I chose to uh, keep in. Now I can make modifications. I could say, oh, I really wanted to keep that modified on column. I meant to get rid of the modified by and maybe the created on behalf by. So now I can modify the step directly there, not look at any of my advanced editor and write my own code. So when removing columns, you definitely want to go with that one. All right, on to our next tip. My next tip here is more about documentation purposes. So I'm going to head over into my employee data uh, table. Now, as we do these applied steps, as you can see, they are listing them here for me on the right. And they're just giving them the, the default names of what these transformations are called. But you can imagine if you've done 20, 25 different transforms and sometimes the names are the same. Maybe you remove columns at the beginning, 10 steps down you had to remove some other new columns. It's going to be hard to figure out which one was for what. Again, you could go to the advanced editor, look at the code, don't want to do it. Let's talk about an easier practice. The easier practice to do here is when you go to your applied steps, if you hit the if you right click on it and you go down to properties so i right clicked on the applied step i hit properties here notice what it now gives me it tells me what my name was and now i can give it a description so instead of expanded employee salaries i could say returning columns after merge and then i can even give it a description choosing what columns i wanted 
from salary table to be added to employee table. And now when I hit OK, we will see that not only did I make a misspelling here, the step has been changed, but now I have this little eye icon. And when I hover over it, it gives me that description of what has now happened within the Power Query Editor. So this is something that I really like, especially when you have 20, 30 uh, applied steps. You might have to come back to a report you worked on six months ago. Now you have your great documentation. You have your breadcrumbs that you can follow. All right. The next tip I'm going to give you here is one I use all the time. I call it my work smarter, not harder tip. It's all about adding in extra columns of data that you need to see. So what I mean by this, this employee data, I have for all of my employees, the city and the state, but maybe I need something more detailed because maybe I'm going to do some geographical uh, data analysis and city isn't going to be good enough. There are multiple Jacksonville's within the US, Jacksonville, Florida, Jacksonville, North Carolina, so on and so forth. So what I need is a column that has the city and the state in there. Well, for my Power BI experience users, you probably know you could go to add column, hit custom column and write in the M language. However, let's work smarter and not harder. I'm going to take advantage of the column from examples. This is awesome. When I hit column from examples, it's going to put a new column on the table and it's waiting for me to give it an example of what I want. So what I want for row one is the city and the state and a comma and a space in between. So I'm going to double click in here and type in winter haven comma FL. After typing that in and I hit enter, bingo, every city, every state for each row is now returned. Now this is an artificial intelligence feature. Sometimes you have to give it more than one example. I've done a whole video on quite a few other features you can use with add column from examples. But if you've never seen it before, hopefully this is eye opening uh, and you can see how easy it is to add in your own columns without knowing the code. So I'm just going to hit OK here. Obviously, I would normally give it a, a different kind of name as well. So hopefully these tips and tricks within the Power Query Editor are going to come in handy for you. Uh, we've got this. And what I mean by we've got this is here at Pragmatic Works, we do virtual mentoring. We have on-demand learning with structured courses that go module by module over uh, that gives you a great scaffolding of how to learn. These YouTube videos are great one-offs, but if you're looking forward or wanting to learn in a more structured way, take a look in the description below to sign up for our on-demand learning. There's even a coupon code for watching my video that you can get a discount on the signing up of the program itself. So again, I hope you have enjoyed. I hope to see you in my future episodes throughout this series. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.